So we will be making our way shortly into the match here. Just waiting on our beautiful spectator, Sayano, to uh, start things up for us. But we will yep, be making our way. Yep, there it goes right there. Right One thing there. I want to point out about uh, Rise Nation as a team, it has been a trend in the past for some of their players, not all of them, but for some of their players to be part of teams that if they didn't win the first map, they were definitely not going to win the second map. That's just a trend that some of these players have had on older teams. Hopefully that sort of behavior doesn't carry over in this scenario because this is where they need to win. If they want to get back into Pro League, they need to win. And a Thatcher ban coming out immediately from Two-Faced. Obviously this, I, this is, um, I think, indicative of some kind of a roam play what? utilizing... Um, utilizing Mozzie and Mute to make droning as difficult as possible for the attackers. The Maverick ban coming out is interesting. I'm not quite sure really where Rise Nation is going with that, but that Rise Nation coming in with the Echo ban, deciding that after that first map, it took them so many rounds to figure out that they just needed to bring an IQ, most likely opting to just not even want to deal with the Echo this, this game. And now Pulse ban coming out from Two-Face, most likely just because of the way the operators are going to choose and the way that they're most likely going to be defending themselves that I don't think they're going to want to bring the pulse, but at the same time, banning it so that Beastly can't play on the pulse as we've seen him play very well on pulse multiple times throughout the season. And uh, that operator seems to be something not, I wouldn't say like a, a crutch for Rise Nation, but something that they utilize and they utilize it up for Intel. So getting rid of that, I think, is going to be important. Um, let's see if a six pick for a mute or a mozzie come out. It's actually going to be a castle instead. So 2F, just uh, throwing it in my face, and I might be totally wrong here. But we're going to see how uh, how they progress throughout the rest of the rounds. Typically, the reason I say that in terms of the way the Thatcher, is, the Thatcher ban is utilized is you see pro teams playing that style of ban Thatcher, run Mozzie, run Mute on every single site. But um, obviously that's not what 2F is doing here. They're gonna be opting to go for something else, probably to strengthen their Cade play and to make sure that the Maestro cams can't get uh, opened up as easily. And also to prevent ADSs from getting destroyed. The Thatcher ban does a lot, pretty much. That Thatcher ban does a lot for a defending team on this map. Well, I'm just surprised that that Rise decided to ban the Cade, or not the Cade, but the Maverick. Because with the Thatcher ban, it's gonna make it so hard already for you to uh, be able to try to open up some of these uh, these walls and some of these mute chambers. And with some of the, not only mute chambers, but bandits and Kaids, I just don't see why you would wanna uh, handicap yourself so much with the Cade ban, or not the, I keep saying Cade, with the Maverick ban. Um, Unless they're going to be going for a window push here. This is very interesting. They have a four-man stack on the East Terrace. They might just be going for a rush into the Cocktail Bar. Thermite's going to be using his exothermic charges on these Castle Barricades. And, I mean, we could just see the Montane repel into, the, into Heaven. I'm honestly not too sure, but oh, the Breaching Charge is going to get placed on the Castle. Creators will send the Impact flying, giving about half of the HP away from Beastly, but it's just unable to find the shot as he repels down just in time. Adam now moving into reading is going to be trying to take control from below to make sure this team knows that they can repel in safely. And he's going to spot Castle awkwardly playing at the bottom of white, just laying down. And England following it up immediately and takes another one down onto Crazy. This is a great push coming out from Rise. Probably very unexpected from F2, not thinking they would, one, have a Montane, two, be pushing from the uh, literally opposite side of the map as typically people normally push from. Dream now waiting as the push might try to come in through uh, Fireplace, but is not going to see anybody for quite a while. As I would assume the attackers are going to back up and try to just force some of these anchoring defenders out of their positions. We did see one defender scurry away there for just a second. Oh, he, he's going to buck there soon. He knows he has to be around there somewhere. He's got to be getting the call out. So some shots rain down from above onto England, but not hitting anything filthy now. Just playing still on the new on the new balcony trying to stay alive for as long as possible as adam has rotated his way all the way up white almost and butter's is going to be trying to hold him back 
Dream, however, will take down Vandal. And 2F now are seemingly scrambling, not not playing together at all, co completely separated at the moment. Yeah, completely separated indeed. And with only 50 seconds left in a Montane with, at the head of this push, it definitely doesn't look good for the defense. Adam is going to make his way into the cocktail lounge. And it looks like a run out here from Filthy. He'll get the kill on the Beastly, but not only that, he'll also down the Diffuser. A triple kill from England will come in as he's really trying to bring this round back for his team. Dream just trying to find the shield. He'll get around the corner of Adam and get the shotgun shell as he tries to go for two, but it's acid there for the trade. So I'll all left up to Bud. We know how well he plays this Cade. He's very good with this TCSG in hand. One of the strong faggers here. It's going to have to be up to England here to make this repel into Cocktail happen and try to stick this diffuser on the ground. The spots are coming out to the player on the bar. He will get the down onto the Jackal. It's going to be Lau all left up to England with the diffuser in hand. And two seconds left. It's going to start to go down. Butter's going to have to contest this. He's going to try to go for the kill. It seems like the spots are coming out onto the player. He'll come around the corner pre-firing and he'll get one kill and secure the other onto Acid. An excellent clutch there from Butters on the Cade to put the first round on the board for Two-Faced. Yeah, I have to I have to say something about this round and that thing that I'm going to say is with Don't do it. Ja with with Jackal not ha receiving his full nerf yet. Why would you not scan Cade's footprints? There's no way he used all three of his scans during that round. In that 2v1 scenario, if you're playing Jackal, why would you not scan his footprints? I mean, yes, you're being spotted the entire time, and you're getting called out, but you have to try to get his footprints, right? Yes. You know? Like, and then and then what what really made that round swing back into 2F's favor was Filthy's run out. Yes, it was risky. Yes, it was ridiculous. But he downed the diffuser outside. And you can kind of speculate that if Adam would have had the diffuser, Defender they would have planted... With a lot yes. sooner, or at least been able to go for it a lot sooner. So, bit of a misstep from Rise there, but 2F playing that very well. Lots of individual play there to keep them in that round. Like I said, they were all spread out, not able to cover each other, not able to trade each other out if the attackers doubled up. And a, la a huge lapse in judgment from Rise is going to cost them a round that they should have won. I, I definitely agree with you. I think that Ryze definitely should have won that round. It's curious as to why, like you said, Adam didn't have the diffuser in the first place. I mean, it makes sense to have your hard breacher on the diffuser, but also, I mean, you brought a Montane. Your Montane should also be a player that has a diffuser, not somebody that's like just going to be repelling on the window, somebody that's actually going to be pushing into the site and pushing deep, Adam did, by himself. To say the least, he had no cover. The only cover he had was on those windows, and with the runout denying that repel, there was nobody to cover Adam. And so it was an easy kill for Dream in order to just get around with that shotgun and put one one shell into the back of Adam, and it, it downed him. So excellent play from Dream to just shut down that Montane play uh, pretty early on in that last round, but. Are going to be switching things up going down to the basement. We will see Butters and Crazy. They'll switch roles and go from the uh, the Cade to the Jaeger and uh, vice versa, respectively. But again, with this Montane play from Adam, we saw this a lot in the qualifiers when Adam was on, I believe, leftovers. Uh, it's going to be England taking the first kill here on to Filthy. The birthday boy going down early on in this round. And it looks like the Montane actually going to push up wooden stairs here and going to try to go for the con contest on to this Jaeger. But it's a double it's a double push. They tried to pinch out the Montane. Adam in a very precarious position with again not really too much cover from his teammates. Yeah, it seems like Ryze are taking control quickly. Filthy haphazardly wandering around in pillars does get taken down. Vandal has control of the coat check room, which is actually a huge position on this site for the defenders to keep control of usually. And Adam is going to be forcing the defenders to rotate, but Butters is all the way upstairs and could be a huge problem as Creators does take down Vandal. So ta retaking control of Coat Check, Acid onto Dream, and could get one more. Oh, we saw the gun for just a second. Is Creators going to peek it? He wants to. Oh, he's going to back off intelligently as England is taking control of Mining and Dining. 
and are going to be <laughs> is going to be reconstructing the site from above. There's obviously a Cade on the hatch. He's not going to be able to get that off unless he wants to expend one of his grenades to do so. But with the part of the wall being opened up, oh, nice play by England, having a little bit of wherewithal about him to figure out exactly where Butters was playing. And Butters just to move it just the wrong time. Oh, but a shot from Crazy with it off a strange angle, not typically seen from the attackers. He's going to trade it back onto England. Creators also hitting Adam, but Adam all by himself again is just wandering around the map pretty much all by himself. I find that to be so curious. It's crazy. Whiffs some shots. And Beast is going to trade it. Oh. And, and actually, Ryze is going to win it out. Creators not able to rotate back in time, being distracted by that Montane. So I guess it served some purpose, but Adam is just kind of walking around by himself in these last two attacking rounds, not, not really being a part of the team, but obviously serving some kind of purpose because he was, he's was he been a huge issue for the defenders on both of those rounds, even though they've lost the first one. Uh, that was, It's just curious, like, the Adam play, like, on the, the shield. He's just roaming around the map, like you said, by himself, and it, it just doesn't, it doesn't make much sense. Why would you play the Montane and not play with your team? You know, like, the whole purpose of bringing a Montane is to gather intel so that way the rest of your teammates can uh, can push off of that intel. And you can sit there and just constantly call. You're, you're basically like a okay, drone that just can't get shot, you know, in, in front. Yeah. So you've got to use that in coordination with your team in order to find the easy frags. So the way in which Adam is playing, because Adam's a great Montane player. I, I, like We've seen him play Montane before, and we know that he's very, a very strong Montane player. It's just the way in which he's playing it right now, I feel is just a little bit off, you know? Yeah, and, you know, 2F playing very dynamically in these last two rounds, obviously trying to, you know, gain their footing and adapt to what Ryze are doing. The Legion is first step in the right direction to try to prevent Adam's progression to, you know, gain map control for his teammates. Um... And Rise Nation, could, I feel like they could have easily lost that attack. There were some questionable shots from Crazy onto, onto Beastly. They did happen to trade via the impact grenade and the follow-up from Acid onto Creators. But, you know, this that round could have easily gone in the direction of 2F. Adam wanting to push into the restaurant now is going to be vaulting in through this window. Sees the Maestro Evil Eye, I believe. Is, he, is that what he's spotting? Yep, that's what he's spotting, is what he's calling out. Gonna bring Vandal over, most likely, to dispatch of that. Beastly now droning up white stairs. are gonna be, uh, their progress is gonna be halted by the shield and the smoke, along with creators on the Maestro, directly challenging this Montane. Waiting for anybody to try to peek in behind him. Not netting anything yet, wasting a ton of ammunition in that magazine, as Dream is gonna throw a smoke, maybe? No, hasn't thrown one yet. One minute into the round, and it's sort of a standstill between these two teams. Yeah, a standstill indeed. And again, we're going to be seeing, again, the solo push on the Montane. He's got the lesion trap in here, so he's not even going to be able to uh, like pull that out safely without worrying about somebody pushing him uh, when there's no cover. So about half the rounds left it looks like they're trying to delay here with coat check i've got somebody in behind the bar but a perfect push in from vandal will take down dream just using that concussion to ward off the, the player inside of coat check in order for him to make that push looks like the player inside of coat check will peak but no oh. it's butters to just slap the head right off of vandal good night zofia you have lost a smoke, though, with about a minute, 15 seconds left. We still have Adam here, just the watcher of the, the first floor. It looks like he's just looking for a rotate here just to call out for his team as England is going to be doing a little bit of reconstruction on this top floor. But it seems like there's nobody roaming up top. Everybody's on the first floor here. Kitchen, Butter's still inside of coat check, it seems, and another goo mine will go out from Adam. It seems like all the damage done to him this round has been from those goo mines, so going to have to be a little bit more uh, wearisome of where those are. With less than a minute left, 2F have to be feeling great about their position at the moment. Their hard breachers can't get in because there's no Thatcher to get rid of them. Beastly will, however, get one onto Creators. Not quite sure how he got it. Probably from a long, long angle out, but now the attackers are actually pushing in through the rotate hole created by the defenders. Adam is watching the hallway at the moment, distracting Butters. 
and but uh, Adam's gonna lose that fight. Acid trades it back onto Filthy. Butters could rotate in to try to stop it, but Crazy has been down, so now it's effectively a 1v3 scenario. Butters is gonna rotate around and try to pick up Crazy, it seems, but he can't get into the site fast enough, and I would assume that the attackers will lock down these angles as quickly as possible, preventing him from getting that revive. One drone coming in, calling out Butters' position. He goes for a pre-fire, but can't quite land it, and Rise Nation will win another round, pushing in the way that they're pushing in. Adam has seemingly lost multiple one-on-one -on -one engagements with Montaigne, and that, would I assume, would be um, caused by the, the nerf that we saw from Montaigne. It's actually making it so that you can challenge him 1v1. He's not, you know, as scary as he used to be, but still being used effectively in some capacity. They're just using it to watch flank and to gain intel on certain areas of the map. And, you know, intel is valuable. Intel is the most valuable thing for an attacking team. It's the one thing that the attackers have to do better than the defenders at all times in order to win a round. So, you know, the defenders have the luxury of being able to sit in certain areas and, you know, wait for the attackers to do something. So, given that, you know, the attackers need defenders to take the initiative, Montaigne is the perfect op to do that. But, it, you know, like we said before, his the position and the style of the Montaigne throughout this map so far has been curious. It's not been anything that I would have expected at all. No, I definitely agree, and looking at this lineup again, it's been weird to see, because Crazy and Butters have basically been just switching roles. Uh, we saw Butters play the Cade on this top floor first round, and the Jaeger was played by Crazy on the top floor as well. But then for the, the two times they went down to the basement, it was both Cade and... It was, uh, it was Butters on the Jaeger and Crazy on the Kaid, so... Interesting how they're choosing to put certain players onto certain roles, just possibly based on their play styles and the different bomb sites. But it's always very weird to see how teams choose to uh, distribute uh, operators to uh, each player. So, looking into round number four here, like you said, last two rounds being won by Rise is. Again, we're we're all tied up here. It is 2F and Rise Nation both at 18 points inside of Challenger League. So the the current tiebreaker does go to 2F, but it's going to all depend on the round count here from Rise. So going to be very curious to see how they make this push onto the east balcony happen again as this is exactly where they came from last time and it was very successful up until the time where they had to actually push onto the site. So going to be a very, very... Uh, uh, curious to see how 2F decides to deal with this. Another thing to make note of is how important it is that Ryze have won two attacking rounds already on this map. It's very defender-sided. Usually a 2-4 split in favor of the defenders is what we would normally see, but at the moment, with two early rounds based off the Monte, and Acid's gonna get a shot onto Filthy from the Skylight, Vandal to follow it up onto Crazy. So, now with the Jaeger and the Maestro off, now Creators goes down as well. It looks like 2F are falling victim to their stationary playstyle as Ryze are able to pick them off one by one. A unfavorable challenge coming out from Dream onto Beastly as now they're all just taking their time, waiting patiently, now knowing where Butters is, is going to get taken out immediately by Vandal with a great trade. So, Ryze taking their time that round. And it looked like 2F was trying to change the way they were playing a little bit, playing a, a little bit more stationary. But once Ryze got their drones in position and locked down certain angles, it was only a matter of time before they walked into someone's crosshairs. At least that's how that round looked to me. So, well played by Ryze, and that's three attacking rounds for them so far. And that's huge, because defense is favored on this map. So, if you're 2F right now, you have to be worried, like, can our attacks be as effective as Ryze's? And if we want to you know, stay in second place. Yeah, they definitely are looking a lot stronger here. And kind of to be uh, 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 assumed, as, again, this is a very... Um, Attackers need to locate and defuse A very old map, uh, even though it's been reworked, I know. But with these bands, I'm very surprised to see the attack winning as many rounds as they are. With the Thatcher... And the Maverick Band. But I guess, I, I mean, I guess Ryze aren't even really opening any walls with Thermite. I don't think Beastly, the only thing that he's used his Exothermic Charges on has been the Castle Barricades. 
and we haven't even seen a mute like you mentioned earlier like the mute you thought that the thatcher ban was definitely to play uh for that mute to deny drones on a roam game we haven't seen a mute brought once nora mozzie which is which is really surprising exactly. to me honestly yeah i'm I'm very surprised not to see Mute or Mozzie being brought, especially especially now, in the scenario where 2F can see how uh, how Ryze are attacking. Yes, you can say that, you know, the Mute Jammers wouldn't be effective against the Montane, but it would definitely be effective against the Thermite charges and the yes. Breaching charges and the things that they're going to want to use to open up Castle Barricades if you're going to bring Castle every single defense, which we don't see this time, but... You know, Crazy trying to directly counter the way that Ryze are playing, taking control of this balcony, trying to gain intel and maybe go for some kind of a run out, trying to pick off one of the Ryze players early. If they could somehow pick off Adam, that would be a huge pick early on in this round because Adam is the entire reason 2F is getting thrown off. If they don't have to worry about the shield, they can just play it a mu a much more in a much more standard fashion. Crazy is waiting for a drop down from the new balcony, looking up towards it at the bottom of the staircase. Is most likely going to be trying to play for a C4 from below, but that's very unlikely given the way that Rise are playing because they're taking control of reading with the Montane and watching the flank from that position. So, you know, Rise seem to have all their bases covered as, me and then in the meantime, 2F are kind of scrambling to figure out how to actually counter this. Yeah, looks like they're trying to use this lesion, as this is gonna be the first time we're seeing this. Finally, we're gonna be seeing the lesion come out to try to deny this push from Adam, as uh, it's very difficult. Well, I mean, we know we've been seeing the lesion brought out. I, I take that back. The lesion has been played uh, a fair bit amount, but definitely a lot more useful for this top floor. Is this uh, this uh, the shield has to push upstairs to, in order to get inside. Unless it wants to drop through a hatch or repel in, that's going to make him very exposed. And with all these rumors, he's going to have to deal with a lot of different angles. Butters will find one on the Beastly. Actually, a trade is it looked like he jumped out of the white stairs window to get that kill onto the Thermite. So, going to be a nice Claymore spot there from Beastly to at least get the trade as Vandal will pick off another one. But they still have this Jaeger to deal with downstairs. And it looks like Adam does know. Adam will spot him out as he's just the man looking vandal comes flying around the corner will find one but crazy on that room in the basement will find vandal so essentially a 3v2 here for the attack gonna have the not only the nitro cell i believe on crazy but still two gas canisters from dream with about 30 seconds left they're gonna need to delay a lot more time here from this attack yeah adam pushing his way up white as smoke canisters are coming out to try to take him down he's taking a ton of damage he's gonna take off that's a kill that means a lot right now in the middle of the round with Montaigne and Buck being the only ones left. However, England is going to rush right in and take Dream down, trying to pinch. And now the C4 is in hand. Can the C4 do any work? Is it going to get a double here? It only gets one. Adam now in a 1v1 versus Crazy. Has to go for the plant with the shield on his back. Does he have enough time to get it down? No, he's going to pull off of it. And that's going to ensure that Crazy is 100% going to win this round. So well played by Two-Face to alleviate the pressure off the East Repel and then to at least be able to put enough pressure downstairs and trade efficiently to throw Rise Nation's progress off long enough for Crazy to get into position to throw the C4. That was very well played and well timed by the 2F defenders. Yeah, it, <laughs> it was just Crazy trying to save the strats for the, uh, for the, K, uh, for the CGG. Just trying to save those CGG chats. Can we take a look at the scoreboard if possible, uh, Sino? Uh, cause I, I, Adam, I don't think Adam has a single kill. I mean, obviously he's been playing that shield and he's just been standing around walking everywhere. So yeah, crazy definitely wants him to get on a gun because Adam literally just played the shield the entire time. I don't think Adam has any kills I, and I believe he would I, only have the two deaths if I'm, if I'm correct, but, uh, yeah, it looks like he is O in two right now, which I mean, Obviously, he's the, he's a Montane. I mean, with, especially with the nerfs that have been coming to Montane recently. I mean, all shields. With the slowed ADS time, it's almost impossible for you to be able to get a kill with him unless you're close enough to just knock, uh, knock someone onto their butt. But either way here, looking very strong for two faces. A lot of those frags are pretty evened up around, uh, on the scoreboard. Yeah, a little bit of a different sort of roam we're seeing. We are seeing the Mute and the Mozzie come out now. It's been yes. five rounds since the last round. <laughs> wow. We're finally seeing the Mute-Mozzie combo I was talking about in conjunction with the Mira window. So, 
you know, 2F, feeling like they can make this happen, and didn't they, didn't they just, oh, never mind, they're out, they're defending reading, and, or mining yes. and dining, I was about to say, like, I was like, what is happening, mm -hmm. but anyway, <clears throat> um, not a good showing so far coming out from Filthy, but I think that's indicative of the map that we're seeing, it's not, it's not as straightforward as Consulate is at the moment. There's a lot of differences we're seeing in the styles of play from both teams here. And as at the moment, Rise still have to be feeling good. They have that extra attack round in hand that they're typically not supposed to have at this stage of the match. So they still have to be feeling good. Filthy playing in a very, very strange position at the moment, right at this window, could get easily taken down by Beastly if they drone him out. They, I think they see him. Or I think they saw him for just a moment as they're waiting as Adam is taking control of mining at least. At least controlling that for his team while they get into position to maybe come through the fireplace itself. Depending on their intel, they might know if there's a player in there or not. Adam is not going to be able to walk his way fully shielded through there as A-Bomb looks completely clear at the moment. But Dream has a crossfire through the wall onto it. So, you know, he's, it's gonna, we're going to have to see how some of the first gunfights go before we can actually see who's at an advantage at this moment. Yeah, you'll normally see the A-bomb left completely clear because you'll have opened up angles into the site itself. It's pretty much impossible to play in that site with the windows, um, and you'll see the repel on those windows. I believe that's going to be Buck of England. But again, Filthy has been left undroned, I believe, on the red hallway. It actually looks like he will rotate all the way down into kitchen or bakery, but it might have gotten droned out by one of the attackers. As we reach about the minute mark left, the first smoke canisters will come out from the attack here. I assume it will be met by a Nitro Cell, but Beastly's just going to walk right in. He'll get the start to put that plant down. Will we see a Nitro Cell come flying through? Yes, we will. It will take the kill on the Beastly. Excellently placed there by Dream in order to find that frag. He might find another one, but no, it's Vandal to find one. Acid and Trades coming back and forth. It's a 2v3 in favor of the defense. 45 seconds left. Acid's ready for this rotate up white stairs. Does the Jaeger know that he's playing here is at England? He'll rotate right into it. It's going to be all creators as he'll take down one kill onto Acid. England with that skeleton key in hand will take down creators in a 1v2 situation. 30 seconds left. The Maestro and the Jaeger trying to see if they can't deny this clutch from the buck and tie things up 3-3 three three here. Butter is just holding the angle on the main hall. England going to rotate in, possibly grab that diffuser. We'll eat a lot of damage from Butters on the mining door. 10 seconds left. It's going to be England on about 10 HP. He's going to try to stick this diffuser, but the defenders are going to eventually try to c c control him. They don't know where he is, though. Do they know he's just to the left here? Filthy, do you see him? No! He will finally get the kill, though, and England, unable to clutch, is going to make this thing a 3-3 tied matchup going into the second half. That's how we typically see defensive rounds go on cafe two face figuring out what they needed to do uh to deny the montane pushes um you know we saw excuse me we saw beastly open up the wall so that adam could push in i'm curious to as i'm very curious to wonder as to why adam didn't push in through the smoke first to potentially bait out a c4 because he can eat the c4 you know what i mean mm -hmm. yep like they, yes, they could go for a fake or, you know, Beastly thought he was potentially planning in a position where they would overthrow the C4 or they would throw it in a different location. But say, for example, Adam walks into the hole that Beastly made and Beastly goes for a backwards plant. Maybe the C4 stops and maybe it doesn't or maybe Montane absorbs the damage altogether. But I think that there's just some curious Montane play. Like I was saying, like it just some of the some of the things that you would think that uh, Montade would be used for in like just intuitively in the kind of operator that he is, he's not being utilized in that way other than to like watch a flank. So, you know, it's just interesting. It's interesting to see how the difference in the, in the way the teams are playing it. But at the same time, like I said, Rise have an extra round in hand because of the Montane play in general. And now we're going to see how effective they can make their defenses against 2F's attacks, which are going to be much more standard, no shield involved as of now. Attackers are moving out to locate a bomb and defuse it. So, <clears throat> oh, yeah, you're good to go. You yeah. I, was, I just didn't know if you were back yet. No, yeah, I'm here. I'm here. I'm here. Um, 
Yeah, I was just thinking. I was looking at this round. We're tied 3-3. Three, three. We're going to be seeing the Ash. Filthy. Going to be getting that uh, nice little phase charm there with the, uh, the lava skin. Is trying to find that camera. With no points on, it's a little harder to tell if you can hit it with the hollow from that range. So just taking a few extra shots to just, just to make sure. Just to see if he was able to take it. You definitely don't want to allow that intel for the defense if you can uh, prevent it. But... Looks like we're going to be seeing the standard take. It looks like they're going to be going through piano and uh, going to be trying to take control of the cigar lounge, make their way into the site. So that's the standard push. We definitely saw some weird pushes coming out from uh, Rise uh, on this bar. It ended up working out in a couple of those rounds, but... Ultimately, I don't feel as though that's the most successful way to attack. I feel like it was just uh, a lack of knowledge from uh, Two-Faced as they didn't know how to deal with that attack. So definitely going to be looking to see a little bit more success. And it's going to be interesting to see how they try to deal with these bandit batteries. There's no, there's no, uh, there's no Maverick and there's no Thatcher available. So they're going to need to use... Uh, Possibly Ash charges grenades or even Zofia charges to try to dispel some of this utility, but it's going to be the Kaid, and that's going to make things a lot more difficult here. Yeah, the Kaid at the moment is going to be the biggest issue for F2 to overcome, along with taking control of White and getting Jaeger out of this position. They are pressuring him very heavily, but they can't open the wall next to him, which makes it so that he's pretty much safely safe in that position and can just wait for the potential push through the doorway, which is exactly what they want, that choke point. So at the moment, no Thatcher is kind of hurting 2F more than it's hurting uh, Rise at the moment. Recognizing the situation that they're in, Vandal is gonna be covering through the rotation hole and Filthy has taken a ton of damage already. So Crazy now just opening up the wall next to the bar itself to potentially open up the opportunity to go for a backwards plant in the, in the midst of the smoke but do they have the proper coverage to make it available to themselves? They have open cigar shop wall. This is typically what we would expect to see out of an attack. And now the push in from the wall, Crazy goes down, Acid holding this very, very good angle as Vandal's gonna tack on some shots as well, Acid with another, and it's a cleanup from Rise Nation. Too easy for them to defend. No real tooth to that attack coming out from uh, 2F there. Nothing really indeed. I mean, without being able to open up those those walls into freezer and bathroom those anchors were just allowed to hold the angles and it just gunned them down as they came through the one hole that they had available to them definitely look to see them try to i mean you got to try to bring a twitch here i would assume to try like take filthy off of the ash and, and six pick a twitch here because that's really the only way that you're going to be able to to take off these bandit batteries um, or even Kaid charges if we see them be brought, but no, the six picks will be from the Jackal to an IQ, and then we'll see the Maestro picked off of the Valkyrie, so kind of a good six pick as they saw the Valkyrie, and they're going to see the IQ come out, but uh, there will be no Valkyrie, so it's kind of a wasted six pick, I would say, from the attack, uh, but I mean, IQ is never a bad operator to bring. I mean, you can still put her up top and use her to try to take down uh, Acid on the bat bandit trick, so, or at least to try to uh, take those batteries out. We will more than likely see Acid go for the battery trick as, I mean, again, there's no Maverick and there's no Thatcher, so he can yeah, definitely just sit there and just wait for it. Yeah, there's, there's no reason not to trick the wall. It looks like they're going to actually be leaving that wall soft potentially to play inside of Bakery to stall out the attack as long as possible on that side. And he's just going to be dedicating his batteries to the back side at the moment. Um, another thing, you know, to get these, to get, to get those Cades off of that wall inside of the freezer there that last round, they needed to pro potentially rotate someone above with grenades or maybe put an Ash Charge from the Skylight into that position to, you know just to try to cause an explosion big enough to get rid of the the Cade. And actually that rotate being used only for a brief moment as he just uses it to get into the coat check and not have to walk out in front of the bakery. So it seems like a little change in the way they want to defend at the moment as Acid is all of his batteries down. There's no reason to remove them or to trick because there is no Thatcher. And unfortunately for 2F, like you were saying, no Twitch being brought. So... It's going to be all up to Crazy to get those batteries off the wall. 
And if Acid can recognize this at just the right moment, there's a, there is a potential for him to start picking up his batteries and moving them around just to, you know, prevent Crazy from taking them all out with no problem. But Crazy does should still also have breach charges potentially. So a lot of the floor could get reconstructed here for in two faces favor. And that's actually a very nice angle from England as he waits for a player to try to come down white stairs, but he's going to fall off of it. Anticipating a different kind of a push from two faced. Yeah, it looks like two faces going for that vertical pressure that we see so often on this site. With the new rework, it's a lot of the uh, a lot of these holes getting opened up above, and these bandit batteries are going to get taken care of, and not going to be able for Acid to be able to trick this. Is I'm going to possibly see Dream come in from Bakery and try to open up this map or open up this wall. As again, it's going to be about a minute 20 here. Not a lot of ground has been f covered by the attack. I mean, they have control of the entire top floor, it seems. I don't think there are any roamers at the moment. We do have a couple people offside on the first floor, though. They could possibly pinch these attackers as they make their work in onto the site. But as of right now, it's completely in control of the attack. They have all these lines of sight open. They're possibly going to just try to cut off these rotates from the defense as they try to come down with the plant. And it looks like, again, we still have Nitro Cells. One has already been dispensed, and the plant actually coming down from Dream. Will he be able to stick this? Will the smoke canister be able to stop it? Doesn't look like they're aware that it's happening. The cover here, perfect from 2F, as it's going to be a post plant in a 5v5 for both teams, as one will be down. Creators can pick himself back up. Vandal on such low HP as he's actually going to go for the push up here onto the wooden stairs. But no, it's going to be crazy there to shut him down, get the, the down. England will take down Dream though, and it's a 4v4. About half of the diffuser left remaining. Crazy will get a double kill on the round as Creators has picked himself back up. So a 2v4 now is actually, it's going to be a down there by the smoke canister, I believe, onto Adam. It's now all left up to Ass, and he won't make it very far at all as it's Creators there to trade out his fallen teammate. Yeah, that was a situation I, I feel for Vandal there, because that's a situation the diffusers planted, you know you just downed somebody upstairs, and you need to try to at least confirm it to give yourself that little bit of cushion, that cushion of safety, but 2F playing together, holding that top floor at that point, because the top floor is the main, after, once the, once the diffusers planted, the top floor is the most important position. So crazy, not getting too aggressive, just patiently waiting for someone to come up that staircase to try to either finish creators or go for a flank and retake top control. We're able to swing the man advantage in their favor, along with the diffuser already being planted. Very well executed by 2F, droning out only what they needed to and only taking Attack control of what they need to, not putting themselves out of position, so to speak, in no man's land to either get picked off by a Rise Attack defender. And Rise actually feeling confident enough to go back down here, so... We're gonna see the difference in the way that they defend this, because potentially they're they're gonna they're, they're they have to eat, try to contest top control. After an attack like that, the, the you're not gonna be able to bandit juggle at all because of the way they open the floor above you. So my my instinct there as a defending team in this scenario would be to try to contest the top floor, try to waste time in terms of uh and you know waste the attacker's drone economy, and then retreat to a more safe position as once you've wasted enough time, potentially, but, you know, we'll see how they play it out this time, because maybe they just need to have more eyes on the plant position to be able to throw the smokes, which is where the Valkyrie comes into play. And no IQ being brought this time, and finally a Twitch being brought instead. So we're seeing some operator selections here that are, you know, coming into play as to what needs to be changed on both sides, but... You know, maybe it's a little, like a little bit too early to switch off of the way you were playing for 2F because I see no reason to get off of the IQ. But apparently Crazy wants to take the Ash and just try to frag out. Yeah, I, I agree. Crazy is just going to be on that Ash roll. I mean, we did see um, the Ash being brought by Filthy earlier, but I, I agree. With the Twitch call, I think that that's going to be a lot more useful to try to take care of any of the utility, denying that wall being opened up. And... Again, we're going to be seeing them try to take this top floor, I would assume, to try to take the bandit off the wall entirely. But it's going to be a very a very slow round, especially with the Thatcher being banned. It's going to be one hell in a cell. As Again, there's no roamers on the side of Rise. They're all on the first floor. So, I mean, technically there's roamers, but they're just not on uh, any floor other than the first. I, I, would I would consider this whole first floor being the site. And... 
You did hear a nitrous all go out. That will just miss onto Butter. So good on him to be unpredictable with his movement up here. And Acid will be no longer without that explosive utility. As we'll finally get to see Dream open up these walls in the bakery. Gonna check out those lines of sight and just wait for his teammate to open up those bandit batteries. And so that way he can go for that main bakery wall in the kitchen. Adam playing, or excuse me, Acid playing behind that little half wall double window right next to the prep area is going to be in a bad position if he gets droned out. But Beastly still playing inside a coat check could be a big problem for the attack as he's pr he can pretty much hold off a lot of uh, attacking aggression from that location. Vandal having his back at the same time as Adam. So tons of pressure from the defenders onto the red hallway itself. Adam seemingly, however, still not in position to actually stop the diffuser from going down, but Ass is gonna get aggressive onto Dream, most likely off the intel of a Valcam or an Evil Eye, and some shots raining in towards the bakery from England all the way back on the eastern side of the bomb site. However, Acid will get taken down by Filthy, at the F2 coming into play, but he's very, very low, has the diffuser in hand, Beastly still holding on to coat check, and now Crazy has to rotate around with only 30 seconds left. Yep, 20 seconds left. mind going out. And very, very close round coming out. Only about 15 seconds left. And the attacker's been completely halted. England taking one down onto Crazy. Beastly with another under creators. Butters trading it back onto Beastly. Now in a effective 1v3 scenario, Butters has to run in and get the spray of his life, but won't happen. Rise Nation winning the defense on the re on the Rego. Yeah. They'll go back down to basement twice in a row, and they'll win it the second time here. And... Now they have the ability to go back upstairs to the the cocktail and bar site, and so that's exactly what they're going to do. Makes a lot of sense. They were looked very successful up here the first time they went to it. We're going to be seeing a similar lineup as we did that first time, except we're going to be seeing the Valkyrie this time instead of the Doc, unless it gets six-picked, which could be very possible as they see the IQ is being brought. We will see, yep, we'll switch six pick right over to that dock. So, yeah, I like that six pick right there. You see the IQ, you know, okay, there, there's no way Filthy, there's no way the birthday boy is going to miss those cameras, you know. He's definitely going to be looking for those on his uh, on his IQ scanner. He really popped off in the last map, and I'd like to look at the scoreboard real quick if we could, um, just to see what the score is, because I, I, I haven't looked at it in a, a little bit here, but... I just want to see how the scores are looking out. I want to see if Filthy is as cracked out on this map as he was on the previous one. Did oh, have 17 kills. Not. 17 and yeah. 5. Yeah, he's definitely not playing as well this map as the previous, but this map requires a different style of play. He's not, you know, roaming as ridiculously. Yeah, yeah he's only got 5 and... You know, that's, that's not that big a deal though. 2F no. is still playing very well as a team, right? You yes. have to you have to point that out and also England and Acid having a good showing at the moment for Rise and Adam still on a donut but he did play the first 6 round or first 6 rounds pretty much on Montaigne without a gun. Yeah. Yeah, so definitely a uh, a, a handicap there for his, his uh for his stats as he was just trying to save those as much as possible. You saw him even come off the diffuser once in order to to save the KDE, but with the, the the 10th round coming in here, it's been very close. A lot closer than what we saw, at least initially, on uh, Consulate. But I definitely look to see this made a little bit closer here. As I, I think that we're going to see 2F possibly. I mean, they need to make this happen. They need to try to have... At this point, they basically have the tiebreaker against Rise. They need to win one more round to have the round to total go in favor of them completely. So... If you can at least win one more round, I'd say Rise is looking, or er, Two Face is looking pretty good to secure that uh, number two spot. However, they do have to play against Obey next week, so that's definitely going to be a very, very uh, interesting match to watch. A very close matchup between two very strong teams, but that's neither here nor there. Oh, I guess it is there, but that's not here. We've got the two uh, the two and the three seed right now facing off battling for that second spot so looking at this push it looks like it's coming in from piano a fairly standard push yeah there's nothing really to take note of other than filthy has rotated his way away from reading and come back into christmas most likely looking for anything he can obliterate with his 
IQ scanner looking for the position of some of this uh, defensive utility. Not quite finding it as Vandal could throw an Electric Claw on there and it looks like they've been taken out. And I think that's why Filthy left that position. He most likely got rid of one of the Electric Claws with the other one playing on the bathroom. Vandal wasn't in position to pick it back up. So now with the freezer wall being open, this leave this gives F2 a lot more leverage in terms of the way that they can attack this. So many more angles for them to hold. Sp specifically on the rotation and the freezer. A Vandal does have a C4 in hand to stop any close plants, but I don't think that's going to be the play. I believe that F2, at least in the way that they're setting up, are going to go for some kind of a push along with a plant. So it, it's going to be have to it's going to have to be a much more reactive defense, especially knowing and making that making sure that their callouts are just right. Dream, however, is going for it with one angle being covered. Crazy will take down Acid. The plant does get put down. England with one onto Dream. And Creators with one butters onto Adam now from inside of Christmas, holding the angle with this uh, diffuser planted. This is looking really good for F2 to tie it up. To F, yeah. Looking to tie it up, but Beastly will come flying and we'll get one kill. And Creators have actually been down. It's a 2v2, essentially. The Doc will finally get finished off, so it's all up onto the 1 HP. England will finish off that kill onto Creators as he was trying to withstand and pick himself back up. But with England on 1 HP, he'll die to a single bullet, and that will be the one coming from Freezer. Filthy with another kill, trying to see if he can't bring himself back to that way that we saw him play on Consulate. But... Again, that's 2F securing that fifth round, which is one more than what Rise was able to get on the previous map. So, essentially, if these two teams end up tied at the end of the season, the tiebreaker will go to Two-Faced because they were able to have a higher round differential than Rise. So, that's big. If it does come up to a tie, obviously, if you're two-faced, you don't want it to be a tie. You want to win this map, get your three points, and get out and take over that second spot. Yeah, these six picks are really, you know, coming from all over the place. Now, opting to not bring the IQ and bring the Twitch instead. This could yield the si this could yield similar results. The big difference in that attacking round for F2 versus the time they attacked um, the bar cocktail before was that they were able to get the freezer wall open, which is something they weren't able to do the first time. So, you know, Twitch being brought this time to potentially make it a little bit easier to open the wall, at least to get to gain a little bit more time on the clock in terms of the way the attack needs to go. But I would assume that F2 are going to attack it the exact same way, and it's really going to be all up to Rise to adapt at that point and see if they can figure out the position that they need to play to, uh, to delay f2's progress as much as possible so interesting six picks overall like pretty much is the is the point of it you know the valkyrie always being taken away in favor of the dock and iq being taken away in the favor of twitch once again it's i feel like it's sort of like a however the however the players are feeling at the moment as opposed to a like a thought out process of what ops they really want to bring yeah, definitely a very strategic choice of operators. And again, it's been kind of like a consistent uh, lineup for each site. They also uh, have their each individual role. I'm going to be seeing a uh, Butters rocking that kick-ass charm. Like, oh, I, I like that charm. <laughs> I I'm looking for that charm in my alpha packs, okay? Um, either way, though. Again, with this Maestro. Oh, crazy. That drone's got hops. He'll hop all the way off the top shelf and go all the way down to the second floor. But with this push into piano, it's going to make this a little bit difficult. Looks like they have England on the shield here playing just inside of the cigar lounge. He's going to be the first person to try to contest this push. He has the holes open onto New Balk or New Hatch to try to see if he can't catch anybody rotating in through there. Butters is going to fly this grenade in. He'll take out the shield more than likely. The Jaeger did rotate out before the grenade came in, though, so... Won't be taking any damage from that as they try to push deeper and deeper into piano. Yeah, now the evil eye getting taken out. Very important to take out that defensive utility in order to make your attack as strong as possible while denying intel to the defenders at the same time. Lots of the same positions still being played by Rise. Both Electric Claws still active, I would assume, and I'm just wondering, oh, nice shot from Dream onto Acid. Maestro being caught out with an evil eye still in position, I would assume. But maybe not quite. Now, Crazy going to be trying to get rid of the the Electric Claws like I was talking about. 
throwing his flashbangs in, gonna opt to throw a grenade instead, which could possibly yield a little bit more of an explosive result. Most likely now has gotten rid of that, and yes, the freezer wall will get opened back up. Vandal has to rotate out of that position as Butters is gonna rotate his way into Christmas, looking towards the rotational. Goes for a little bit of a pre-fire, not quite landing anything. Vandal has retaken Acid's position now behind this reinforcement. With still with a C4 in hand, could help his team with any progress or any um, aggressive plays from the attackers into Freezer. As a smoke canister is going to halt the progress on White Stairs. The attackers with only 30 seconds left have to make something happen. He's going to uh, eventually push in, I'm guessing, and just go for a pre-fire, but can't quite land it. England with two big kills. Another one from Adam. Now watching. Oh, England can see the diffuser oh. being planted right in front of him, but he misses it. He doesn't quite see it. The diffuser has been planted, and if creators can get to a good enough angle, potentially at the top of the skylight, he could cover the plant completely. Now in a 1v4 scenario, creators could clutch this up. They have no idea where he is, but I have to assume that he's in Christmas somewhere. The ACOG kind of covering his lines aside a little bit as one gets taken down oh. by creators, but the other one won't quite be as successful as now Vandal being the effective distraction for his team to get that will now a secure rise at least one point in this second match. That's a big, big round and good ad adaptation from rise. Well played by England to get those two frags. Yeah, big play is coming out from Rise there late in the round. They did let the Diffuser get down, but they were able to clean it up quickly thereafter. Looking at match point now. So they've essentially secured one point for sure here. Depending on how this next round goes, round number 12, we've gone the full distance here. Two-Face definitely needs to secure this last point in order to kind of give themselves a... Um, give themselves a buffer with the standings i mean they will be tied still at 18 points i believe it's eight or is it 19 points hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. it is at 19 points because two face secured three points earlier on and they're, they're now tied with rise so they're both in second place but two face has the uh the round differential as we've been saying so Two-Face are going to be in second place indefinitely if he does end up tied at the season break. So it's going to be it's going to be a very close end of the season. And I can't wait to see how these matches go up next week. As we'll, I mean, I will be casting if you're available. I'm, I know I'll be available. Um, the Riot, or the Two-Faced and Obey match, which should be another very, very good game. Yeah, I should be available for that. I don't see any awesome. reason why I wouldn't. Um, the, so, as we're moving into this round, we're going to see a reading room and dining room defense coming out from Rise. We've seen them defend this position before. And regardless of what happens during this round, this is the last round we're going to see between these two teams. So Rise, after securing that point, knowing that they're in potentially they have the potential to get back into second place are going to be fighting tooth and nail i would assume to try to keep their position in their control at least for the standings of the challenger league at the moment 2f right now moving to the roof going to go for a top down clear nothing too out of the ordinary here from either of these teams i would assume that both teams are going to be playing this very very standard and the wild card on the side of the defense that, that i believe is going to end up being vandal Beastly bring in the mute to try to delay as much as possible when it comes to the droning of the objective itself and to be opening up a couple holes in the floor it looks like to either cover help cover the defenders upstairs or for the defenders upstairs to cover the bomb site itself so Vandal right now is the wild card he is the one that could potentially win his team the round with a c4 from an obtuse location where a camera has been positioned. There's some pressure being applied onto White Stairs from 2F. The freezer wall is being opened. Pre-fires from creators would be ideal at the moment, at least to try to hold them off. But Rise uh, on the side of Adam is going to throw one smoke, dealing a little bit of damage to creators. The ADS has been burned now. They could get concussed or grenaded from the top. And Adam walking 
Oh, barely sees the attacker. It's going to take a ton of damage, but not get downed. One grenade going out, another ADS catching it. And things are looking good for Ryze at the moment, but Crazy could pick this kill up, and it would be huge. They're they're converging on him, but not quite, as Acid looks the other way at the wrong time, and Dream's going to trade him out. Dream now in a gunfight with Acid, or excuse me, with England. England trapped in this corner is in a 2v1 scenario right in front of him. Can he win the fights? No, he can't. He's going to get traded out as well, and now it looks like 2F are going to be pulling it back in their favor. This is huge. This is huge indeed, as there's only two remaining players. Both have nitro cells to play with, though, and two decent guns as well. As it, it's going to be a, a very close end of this match with four minutes, 45 seconds left. My apologies. That's going to have to be up to Two-Face in order to gather this intel and close this match out. It's theirs to throw away or theirs to take with ease. As Again, they're making some more holes, just trying to see if they can't find these anchors, but they're not giving them the angles just yet, playing it very patiently on the defense as Beastly's just waiting for this rotate to come in through fireplace, just sitting in the reading hall. Vandal sitting at the bottom of White Stairs, waiting for an attacker to possibly walk into his line of sight. But 14 seconds left, it's going to be a 1v4 now for Vandal. Try to win this out and keep his team with the three points, but no, it's Two-Face to tie things up. Each team will receive one point, and that's going to be... Two-Faced taking over second place, essentially, with the round differential. They took more rounds than Two-Faced did, or than Rise did, so they'll be going to that number two spot. That'll be Rise Nation falling down to third place. England with 17, answering back filthy.